Yeah, good. Hello, welcome to uh, XCR CloudLens presentation. I am Christophe Olivier. I'm the product manager for the CloudLens virtual visibility solution. It's an XCR virtual visibility product. Let's roll. Everyone, at, to the end, you, can you hear me well? Yeah? yeah? Okay. So, real quick, we only have 20 minutes. The agenda, four bullets. What, is, uh, what are the challenges of monitoring virtual networks? Uh, I'm going to explain to you what is our CloudLens virtual visibility solution. A little deeper dive in what we can do in OpenStack environments. And uh, because this is called marketplace and demo, I have also a demo for you um, at the end. So real quick, what is Ixia? Ixia has been around for about 20 years. Initially specialized in test business, it grew by um, acquisitions. It's now also doing visibility. Uh, it's been doing visibility for a while, and uh, after acquiring several companies, we got acquired about, and that became official two weeks ago. Uh, we are now part of Keysight. So that number over there, 500 million, uh, just grew about uh, tenfold in the, for the last two weeks. So now, what are the challenges of monitoring virtual environments? If you are old enough, and when I look around here, it seems that uh, I can say that, you are familiar with what's on the left over there. Monitoring your network was kind of not easy, but easier. You had the data center and a firewall or firewalls, and then you would go to the internet. That was a well-defined perimeter. Now, with, you still have the same perimeter, but it grew. And now we have uh, Internet of Things, we have public clouds, we have private clouds, we have virtualization. So that made things much more complicated. It is now much more challenges, challenging to monitor your environment. And when you look at the numbers, that may not make you feel much better. If you look at that first bullet, by 2018, according to some analysts, 25% of the, the traffic would go directly from the mobile device to the, to the cloud without going through your security devices, your security defenses. It is kind of a scary number. And when you have monsters like AWS who recognize that security is really the highest priority in, uh, in that environment, it really says something. So the last bullet here, by 2018, about 60% of the enterprises, if they implement appropriate cloud visibility and control tools, will experience one third fewer security failures. So it's very important to do something. So what do we do? And before what do we do? What is the real challenge in the virtual environment? Um, I don't know if all of you are familiar with the term east-west traffic. This is what we have here. Uh, east-west traffic is the traffic that goes between workloads. So here in that diagram, I have a web application that talks to a database or an application server that talks to a database. And if you have in place physical appliances that monitor security, and this is where Ixia and other uh, competitors are good at, it's to do what we have here with that red question mark. We know how to do that well. When the data hits a wire, hits a fiber, we know how to capture it. We put a tap, we send those packets to a packet broker. You see, it is well known. And from there, we send it to the tools on the right. Here, oh, okay. And we know that to do that. But in a virtual environment, how do you do that? You don't see that traffic. That traffic never hits that wire. Most of the traffic, about 80% of the traffic, goes directly from one workload to the other, from one virtual machine to another, without hitting the wire. And how do you get to it? That's the big challenge. And when you get that traffic, the, the volume of traffic may be another big challenge. So the answer to that is what we call our virtual visibility fabric. And what does it do? First, it leverages whatever you have as your environments to monitor. So it can be a private cloud, it can be a public cloud, your software-defined data center, a branch office, that solution will apply to it. Second, it will capture and send packets and flows of interest to the tools. We are not a tool, we are feeding the tools. We are getting the packets to the tools so that those tools can do the packet inspection or do whatever you need to do with those packets. 
And that third bullet is very important. That solution applies to both virtual and physical environment. And by that, I mean, your customer, you already have physical appliances, packet brokers, um, physical tools or probes. You want to leverage them? We don't care. You can get that traffic at the virtual level and send it to your existing uh, physical appliances. That's fine. If you want to go full virtual, because some customers don't want to hear about physical anymore, or don't have those physical equipment, you can do that too. So we are kind of tool agnostic. We get the packets and forward and send those packets, the internals, to those tools. And we can also limit the amount of data because that's another challenge. It's the amount of data that represents that virtual uh, VM to VM traffic, that east-west traffic. So we can filter as close to the source as possible so that you don't have to send huge traffic to those tools. And the solution is called CloudLens. And CloudLens is an umbrella solution that covers from the private cloud to the public cloud and with a hybrid cloud in between. And because those environments are so different, you don't have the same level of permissions in a public cloud that you have in the private cloud. So when, to imp when you implement that solution in the public cloud, you need to implement it in a different way or with different options. That's why I know we are at the OpenStack Summit but we have different options if you want to monitor your AWS or your Azure environment, or if you want to monitor your private data center. And that public cloud solution, when you, when you deploy such a solution, you really have to keep in mind that you are dealing with a very flexible environment, with scalable environment, and that solution has really been developed for that. So capture all relevant data, full packets if you want, or just pick what you need by filtering from level two to level two for filtering. And to go a little deeper in that solution, it, we have, it has kind of a three families of features, the net stack, the packet stack, and the app stack. On the next app stack side, we, that's where we do the virtual tapping. We can do some filtering, level two to level four filtering at the, at the source, very close in the compute node in the host in the hypervisor. We can do, uh, and then we do aggregation and we can send those packets via a JRE tunnel, via VLAN, to a packet processing feature. So that packet processing can be physical or can be virtual. Here, we don't really care. It's just the, the feature at the high level, but we offer both options. <laughs> so the packet stack is where we do the packet processing. We do deduplication, header stripping, packet trimming, protocol trimming, as well as jury tunneling, and load balancing. The app stack um, component is where I think it's very exciting. It's the last one that we are announcing just uh, as we speak, is where we apply application um, intelligence. And I think it's very important because I, I've said that a few times already, in a virtual environment, the volume of data, it is so important, so huge, that sometimes it may make your solution kind of a not relevant, but uh, not realistic, because it is, it is so huge that your tools cannot absorb it, your network cannot absorb it. So you may want, if you can, because depending on your, on your uh, vertical, you may not be able to do that. But if you have the choice, you may not want to send full packets all the time. You may want to focus on NetFlow, for example, or, and then send that metadata to your tools and when the tool needs more, it can request more to the cloud and solution, and then we can send a packet capture to help with the troubleshooting. So I think that that, that, that right app stack here is very important. I will show you in the, in the demo in a minute. So here, just another view of the solution where we have the three, I would say, pillars of that solution. The data access from everywhere, the intelligence packet processing, as well as the adaptive and intelligent monitoring. So data access from everywhere. You can get your data from physical tabs, from virtual tabs, in multiple hypervisor environments from KVM, OpenStack, VMware, Hyper-V. Then you get those packets and you need to send your packets somewhere. And you send your packets to a packet processing feature, physical or virtual. And you do whatever you do with your packets, deduplication, packet trimming, header stripping. And after that, you pass it to the third layer with that adaptive, adaptive and intelligent monitoring where 
the application can request more if needed. And all of that managed from that Cloud Lens management interface. I have to hurry. <laughs> so now a little deeper into what we do in OpenStack. Here I'm focusing on the virtual tapping uh, piece of it. And we have two ways to capture that virtual traffic in OpenStack, either at the Open vSwitch level, so with KVM OVS, or by leveraging Tap as a Service, or TAS. The both have some uh, advantages or, or features. And the first one is that you capture packets or you monitor at the infrastructure level. And you don't have any tenant footprint. It integrates with Nova services. It is, uh, but it is dependent on the, on the OVS, on the open vSwitch, and requires some access from, from the administrator. But it is well suited, as I said, for infrastructure monitoring. And um, it has less virtual infrastructure overhead. On the other side, the tap as a service solution uh, is usually well liked by uh, service providers or by customers because you introduce multi-tenancy support, which means that the virtual tap can be installed per tenant. And tenant A can monitor without tenant B watching what's happening. And then you have that security separation. That's done by installing service machines at the tenant level. In each tenant level, they are deployed using heat template and monitored from that Cloud Lens Manager interface. And that's what I'm, I'm going to show you in, uh, in that demo. So service VM implementation and uh, kind of uh, really well, uh, well, well, uh, well liked by, uh, by service providers for that multi-tenancy feature. This way. OK. Uh, so the benefits of the solution, multi-tenant support, as I mentioned. So it's, it's aware of OpenStack object. It integrates with the OpenStack uh, solution, Nova, Keystone, Salometer. Uh, the solution is. Uh, uh, integrated with both physical or virtual environment. As I said, you can send your packets to a physical packet broker or physical tool, or you can stay in your virtual environment and, and do everything in virtual. It uses the best network capabilities available. It is flexible. It is REST APIs are available. So if you want to go the other, the other mile and do integration, you can leverage those, those APIs. And uh, it integrates well with uh, OpenStack even data, metadata. So now, I'm going to switch to a demo. So I haven't, I was not brave enough to do a demo live. So I have a recorded demo of this environment. So first thing, real quick, is here. It's my, so what we're doing here, we have an open stack environment which has a controller node and a compute node. And what we are doing is that we are monitoring that traffic between those two VMs. And we generate traffic. I will show you with uh, one of XCR tools that simulates some enterprise mixed traffic. And we tap it using tap as a service, which is a service VM installed in, uh, in that compute node, and which leverages the tap as a service framework. And from there, we send that traffic via Jerry Tunnel to our CloudLens app stack component. So here, I wanted to show you that, yes, we are using OpenStack and how it looks in the OpenStack environment. So here, that's the footprint of that service VM, the, 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 the virtual tap. And at the bottom, it's the CloudLens manager, which is also running in OpenStack. Now we log in to the management interface from where you're going to configure your virtual tabs, your filters, if you want to. And here, so in a typical deployment, if you do it in VMware, you will do that from the GUI. Here, because we used the heat template, this has already been uh, populated before with, from, from the heat template. I just, and here, I'm showing you that you can select between tenant or host to configure and monitor what you want to do. So in this case, uh, the host option, the OVS option, was not installed, but I'm using the tenant option. Now the next step, what you do is to configure the forwarding policy. So what do you do when you capture your traffic? Where do you send it? Here I'm defining the, the, the GRE tunnel, the destination of where I want to send those packets. Just very simple. 
enter the IP address, select jewelry, and then uh, save that. Now we have that jewelry policy, uh, that uh, forwarding policy defined. The next step is to define the capture, per, capture policy. So what you want to capture, full packets, filter. So I have several options here, but I, in the end, I will just capture all packets, select my forwarding port that I defined earlier, and then apply. And the next step is to select what do you want to monitor, which virtual machines workload you want to monitor. Just click here, and you select what you need to monitor here. Don't you end, click yes, and as soon as you click yes, the system is monitoring your, your live environment, and traffic uh, packets will be captured. So to show you that uh, even if it's recorded, we had TAS running, I switched to the TAS mode in terminal. I don't know if you can read, but ran a few comments to show you that TAS is working and the flows are also listed here. So the good thing of the Cloud Lens Manager is that it hides all of that. Of course, you could do it yourself. But if you want to do the filtering and all of that, you have to do it from the command line. So here, I'm showing you how I'm generating traffic. It's, it's part of the demo. It's not part of the Cloud Lens solution. I'm just using IX Chariot, uh, one of our test tools, to generate uh, an enterprise mix that I can tweak. And here, what I'm doing is that just getting the packets is not really fun by itself. And instead of using Wireshark or something that goes deep inside, I wanted to show you that third component, that app stack that I talked about, where we can visualize what's happening in those packets. What's in those packets? It's a, it's a deep packet inspection uh, feature, which is offering NetFlow generation, application filtering, um, geolocation. And here, at a glance, the administrator has a as an overview of what's happening on the network, where the traffic is coming from, what kind of applications are, are talking on this, um, on, this, on this network, which are the most talkers, application most talkers, which operating system are, are running there, uh, which browsers. And you can create filters, and I, I would create a filter real quick. And you can, of course, configure and say, I want to see the last five minutes, the last hour, the last day. And you can expand and see what's happening. So here, I'm just showing the, the geolocation because, of course, it's cool. It moves. And, and here, you can see that at a glance, you think, oh, I have traffic coming from China. And that's not supposed to happen, that maybe it's worth digging. So here, I'm just moving my cursor. It's kind of a showing you where the traffic is coming from. Of course, I had to put some thing from France because, as you heard, my accent is not from Texas. So, France has to be there. So the next, the, I would say the, the, the goal, the target of that app stack is not just to show that dashboard. The dashboard is nice, it's cool, but as I said, we are not a tool. We are providing data, we are feeding data to the tools. So it's good, you can, you can use that dashboard, but what I'm showing you here, but just briefly, not, I'm not demonstrating all, demonstrating all features, is that you can create filters can create filters and see, oh, I want to see what's coming from China. And I want to see which, uh, who or from China, uh, the Facebook traffic. That's what I'm doing here, Facebook and YouTube traffic from China. And then you can apply actions to, to that. You can do regex filtering. You can do application forwarding. So send that traffic to a specific tool. So you can do all of that. I would say it's, it's the most important part of that app stack. It's, the dashboard is the nice looking thing. but. The engine behind it, the network processing, is really processing those requests. And here, the next thing is I'm enabling NetFlow. So if you have a NetFlow collector, just go there, um, enter the destination point of your NetFlow collector, and then, boom, you will get your traffic in uh, Plexus, Scrutinizer, in NTOP. So lots of things can be done by that app stack. That's not, that was not the whole point of the demo, but I thought it was nice to, to show it here. And you see it did not crash. That's, uh, Pretty good. <laughs> OK, that's all for now. If you have, we have a few more questions, uh, seconds for questions, if you, if you have some. Come here, I cannot check on you. <laughs> the monitoring VM which was running, which yeah. was capturing the real tap packets and sending it to your yes. controller was running the same compute where the other VMs were also running. Is that a requirement, or it can run at any compute? So the question is, the, the VM, which is uh, monitored here, is it in the same compute node? Yes, yes. So, it can run on any compute and monitor 
Yeah, so we have one service machine to monitor per uh, availability zone. Here in this case, I had just one availability zone. It's my, my compute node, but uh, it, it depends on, on your setup. Yeah, but, but you may need to run more than one service machine depending on how many availability zones you, you have. It depends if you want to send full packets. If you send full packets, you are going to double your traffic. If you want, that's why it's important, if you can, to send NetFlow or to filter L2 to L4. Say, I only want traffic from IP this and IP that, so that you lower that amount of traffic. If you send everything, you send everything. So you increase that traffic. SROV, future plans. SROV becoming kind of a not really virtual anymore. So it's uh, right now we, we don't support SROV, but uh, we are thinking about. Okay, thank you.